Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of Cameralabs.com. I'd like to give you a brief video tour around the Canon EF 24-105mm lens. Here it is, the 24-105. Now this lens is compatible with every single one of Canon's digital SLRs, whether they've got full frame sensors or cropped frame sensors. But depending on what kind of body you've got it mounted on, it represents a different proposition. So we've got two completely separate reviews of this lens, and also two different videos to go with them, depending on what kind of Canon DSLR you've got it mounted on. This particular video is dedicated for anyone who wants to use this lens on a full frame body, such as the EOS 5D, which is what I've got it mounted on right now. Now when you have this lens mounted on a full frame sensor, its actual focal length is what you're working with, so it goes from 24mm, which is really decent wide angle and noticeably wider than 28 all the way to 105mm, which is fairly respectable telephoto. This gives it excellent general purpose coverage, and we've got some examples of that coming up in just a moment. But first, let's have a look at the physical characteristics of this lens. If you have a look at the end of the barrel, you'll notice a red ring going around the outside. This denotes that it's part of Canon's top of the range L series, that's L for luxury, and it gives it several benefits over the non-L models in Canon's range. First of all, unlike all the other lenses in Canon's range, the L models come with a lens hood, which is great news. You also get a pouch for carrying the lens in. The build quality of the L models is also excellent. They feel very, very solid, and the moving parts move very, very smoothly. The focusing ring here, which is at the top of most L lenses, feels very, very smooth when you turn it. There's no catching here at all. Similar for the zoom ring here. If I turn that, you'll see the extent of this lens as it zooms from 24mm to 105 You'll also notice that even if I just turn this very, very slightly, there's no risk of creep, at least on this relatively new model anyway. One of the other features of this lens is USM focusing. This is very, very fast and very, very quiet. I'll give you an example of that. First of all, I'm going to manually focus the lens to its closest focusing distance, and you'll notice the little window here with the focus distance marks. Now, if I hold the lens very close to the camera here and press the shutter release button halfway, that's the sound and the speed of the lens going from one extreme of its focusing range to the other. Very, very quick and very quiet. You may have also heard a very faint clicking sound there. That's another feature of the 24-105 that really is very, very useful. This lens has built-in image stabilization, and that click was the sound of the stabilization actually kicking in. Now, like other Canon lenses, the stabilization is actually built into the lens, and the benefit of that is that you can actually see the effect through the optical viewfinder, and it's really very, very reassuring to see that image stabilization kick in when you half press the shutter release. Right, that's enough of the physical characteristics. Let's have a look at what this lens can do for you in practice. This first shot was taken with the 24 to 105, zoomed all the way out to 24 millimeter. Now, because this was taken with a full frame body, you really are getting 24 millimeter coverage. And if you're familiar with these coverage shots from Cameralabs.com, you'll recognize straight away that this is comfortably wider than what you'd get with a 28 millimeter standard wide angle. This gives the 24 to 105 great flexibility at the wide end. This shot was taken with the 24 to 105 zoomed all the way in to 105 mm and it's clear that you can get really quite close to your subjects with this lens. It's quite a comfortably tighter crop than the last shot. So once again, very good wide angle and decent telephoto capabilities makes the 24 to 105 an ideal general purpose lens if you're using a full frame body. To put that range into perspective, here's another shot taken at 24mm. Now we've already seen how 24 is ideal for capturing big landscape views, but it's equally applicable when you're taking shots around town. This photo of a chilly harbour was taken at 24mm, and it's allowed us to capture both the boat in the foreground and the bridge in the background. It's also really useful focal length to have at your disposal when you're taking photos indoors. This shot inside a cafe was taken just from the other side of a small table, yet it's captured a very large field of view. And if you're careful about positioning your main subject in the middle, you don't need to worry about any distortion. At the other end of the range, you've got 105mm. And even on a full frame body, this gives you quite respectable telephoto capabilities. This shot was taken with the lens fully zoomed into 105mm, and it's allowed us to get a decent crop on these buildings, which are actually quite far in the distance. The lens's image stabilisation also made it very, very easy to line this shot up through the optical viewfinder. 
Of course, one of 5mm is also an ideal focal length for taking portrait shots, and this picture was again taken with the lens fully zoomed in, and this time with the aperture wide open at f4.0. The 24-105 actually has a constant f4 aperture throughout its range, and this is the kind of effect you'll get with it fully zoomed in, wide open on the aperture, and with the subject reasonably close. The 24-105mm is one of Canon's very best general purpose lenses, especially when mounted on a full frame body like the EOS 5D. On a body like this we've seen it delivers decent wide angle to quite respectable telephoto coverage, and as such it's an ideal single lens to have mounted on a camera like this for day to day use. Being an L lens the build and the optical quality is also very very good, and we also found the image stabilisation really works, it genuinely allows you to hand hold exposures much slower than you would normally be able to. But there are downsides and with this lens the biggest problem is in terms of light fall off in the corners especially when it's zoomed out to 24mm and when its aperture is wide open. There you'll find that the light falls off in the corners quite significantly. You will notice it on shots of say blue skies or if you're taking a picture of maybe a plain white wall you'll notice the picture getting quite dark in the corners. Now this isn't uncommon for a lens like this and it's also something that is relatively easily correctable in software. But if it's something that bothers you, you should be aware that you will notice this on this lens, especially when it's zoomed down. Also, if you do have the budget for this sort of lens, which isn't exactly cheap, then there are two other models that we'd recommend you can also consider. One is the older EF24 to 70mm model. Now that lens obviously doesn't have as long a telephoto end as this one, and it doesn't have image stabilisation either, but what it does have is a faster f2.8 aperture throughout its range. That allows it to work really well under low light conditions and produce an even more blurred out of focus effect in the background when you're taking portraits. It's an ideal portrait lens focusing very very quickly and it's also a favourite of wedding photographers so if that sounds like your style of photography you might want to check it out. Coming in at about two thirds of the price of this lens is the EF 17 to 40mm. Now that delivers ultra wide angle coverage on a full frame body like the 5D, but it's one of the most affordable L lenses in Canon's range. So you get the L build quality, the L optical quality, and of course the lens hood, but in a relatively affordable and a lighter and smaller package. So there are two options that you might want to consider if you're in the market for this. If however you're after one of the best general purpose, most flexible lenses for a full frame body, then it's hard to go wrong with the 24-105mm. If you'd like to see how it performs against lenses like the 24-70 and the 17-40mm, then head on over to our full review at www.cameralabs.com. There you'll find full results for this and other lenses, and also some more example shots of this lens in practice.